Good evening, everybody. For the next few minutes, I'm going to invite you all into the world of prison education. And by prison education, what I really mean is prisoner education, or education that takes place in a prison. But I'm using the expression prison education, even if it is slightly misleading, because that's what it's called right across Europe, and because that's, it's quite similar to correctional education, as it is known as in North America, Australia, and other countries. So to navigate this world of prison education, I'm going to look at three aspects of it. I'm going to look at practice, provision, and philosophy. But it is the latter, it is the philosophy, or the ideology that underpins the provision and practice that I will be mainly concentrating on. So in other words, what I'm really going to talk about is the why of prison education rather than the how of prison education. And I want to do so because I think that's possibly the best way for me to explain to you how education in prison can transform a prisoner's life, how it can help them reach their full potential, and how ultimately it will help them to live more successfully on release. But before I delve into that, I think maybe a little context or a little background would be helpful. In Ireland, all prisoners have a right to education, and education is available in all prisons. The education is de delivered in a, a kind of a partnership arrangement between the Irish Prison Service on one hand and the local ETBs on the other. So the ETBs, or the Education and Training Boards, they're statutory education authorities that deliver education in secondary schools, adult learning centres, in further education colleges, and of course in prisons. So what that means then is that the prison teacher is employed by the local ETB rather than the prison service. And that's very significant and that's very important. And here in Mount Joy, for example, all the teachers are employed by the City of Dublin Education and Training Board and they're the body that delivers the education. And all the teachers here, we enjoy the same terms and conditions of service as any mainstream teacher. And like I said, I think this is one of the primary reasons why prison education in Ireland is so successful. And in fact, when you compare it to prison education in other parts of the world, it actually is quite outstanding. And it's outstanding because of that partnership arrangement because having the ETB on board means you're getting a professional service that's delivered by education experts. And by having the prison service on board, it means that that service is then tailored to the unique needs of the prison population. And it is that working in tandem with each other that makes it, like I said, so successful. So that now you know a little bit more about who we are, it's probably a good idea to talk about what we do. And in order to do that, I'm going to look at the curriculum. And once again, Ireland is actually quite unique. Because unlike in many other countries, where prison education is just focused on basic skills, or it's just focused on employability skills, or it's just focused on addressing offending behaviour, or if they're lucky, some amalgamation of all three, in Ireland we do a lot more because we're focused on the holistic development of the prisoner. And how that translates down on the ground is that our curriculum is exceptionally wide and adult-centred. So here in Mount Joy, for example, the curriculum ranges from literacy to open university courses, from politics classes to cookery, from PE to music, and lots of different academic and not so academic subjects in between. And of course, the real benefit of the wide curriculum is that it allows much more opportunity for our students, for the prisoners, to get accreditation and certification. 
And that, like I said, is what's very significant in Ireland. And also, this emphasis on looking at the holistic development of the prisoner means that the creative arts are a crucial aspect of our curriculum. So subjects like art and music and drama and pottery, we see them as central, as core subjects. And they are so important to us because they have proven to be easily navigated gateway subjects into more formal learning and accreditation for, for prisoners. So that's why I believe that uh, this broad curriculum, that this whole idea of the holistic development of the prisoner is so important. And, you know, when we talk about prisoners coming to school to do creative arts subjects like that, I do know that some people might find that a bit jarring. But, like I said, because we're in the business of second chance education, what we're actually doing is not giving people extra. It's not a top-up, it's an actual catch-up. And that's why I would suggest that anyone who thinks that prisoners somehow don't deserve all these educational opportunities, that simply because they've committed a crime, we should just lock them up and throw away the key, well, then they're being rather short-sighted. Because the reality is that prisoners will always, here in Ireland, they will always leave. And if we don't allow prisoners this second chance of education, they are not going to leave having been changed in any way. So we would see that this notion of second chance education, it is important for us because it allows us to get prisoners to develop the skills and competencies necessary to live on the outside. So you don't need me to tell you that most prisoners in Mountjoy came to hate secondary school as teenagers. They couldn't wait to get out of school. And let's face it, unfortunately, many of those schools couldn't wait to get rid of those prisoners. So it's no wonder then that so many prisoners that they have these negative connotations towards education, that they have a negative mindset towards education. And we believe it is our responsibility to dispel those negative connotations, to ensure that our learners come to have a love for learning and that they will then come to see the intrinsic value that can be had from education. And more importantly, that they pass that value on to their children. Because if they don't pass on that value of education to their children, we are looking at more and more intergenerational education disadvantage and all the problems that go with that. So it's that ripple effect. It's that, that's for, for us, is what's central and is what's crucial. And as educators, we're just as concerned with the long-term effect as the short-term gain. So, like I said, I know that some people will feel that maybe this, it is, the short-term gain is, is probably more than people deserve. But I think that this whole focus on personal development, on the creative arts, is really important. If a guy comes up to us and wants to learn guitar, he is now, by default, re-engaging with education. He's hanging around with other learners, and he's in a learning environment. So he's much more likely to tip his toe back into academic learning. Now, when I was listening or looking at the choir earlier on, it suddenly struck me that that scenario, that idea of somebody learning guitar, that there was somebody in the audience who, or in the choir who fitted that perfectly. He first came to us to learn guitar, he then moved on and did a good few QQI qualifications. He did his leaving cert, and he's now more than halfway through an open university degree. And in addition to that, while he was doing all of that, he also managed to qualify as a gym instructor 
and at the moment he's teaching yoga to some other prisoners. So I think he is living proof of how this holistic view of the prisoner is essential. So before I finish up, and I know everybody has said already they want you to take one thing away from the talk. I too want you to take one thing away. We'll have a lot of things to take away, a lot of baggage leaving Mount Joy. We here in prison education, we believe that education has the power to transform our prisoners' lives. It is very important for us. We have seen how it can change people forever. As educators, we believe everyone has the potential to turn their lives around. And it is that capacity for change that we tap into. Because we have seen how education in prison, it can create and it can cultivate the knowledge, the skills, the values, and the motivation for positive citizenship. It can ensure that prisoners develop social responsibility and personal responsibility. And by so doing, it leads to personal transformation. And it, it is this personal growth or this personal transformation that ensures that prisoners can then in, in turn change their whole perception of themselves, their perception of themselves and their perceptions of others. And it is those perceptions that determine our behavior. So like I said, I want you to take one thing away. And the one thing I want you to take away is that education in prison is a powerful catalyst for change. It's really important. It can change people's lives because it allows them burst open their life choices and their life chances. And in that way, it can lead to real and lasting change that will transform their lives. Thank you. Thank you.